Book 2, Chapter 38 A man of the highest virtue does not keep to virtue, and that is why he has virtue. A man of the lowest virtue never strays from virtue, and that is why he is without virtue. The former never acts, yet leaves nothing undone. The latter acts, but there are things there are things left undone. A man of the highest benevolence acts, but from no ulterior motive. A man of the highest rectitude acts, but from ulterior motive. A man most conversant in the rights acts, but when no one responds, rolls up his sleeves and resorts to persuasion by force. Hence, when the way was lost, there was virtue. When virtue was lost, there was benevolence. When benevolence was lost, there was rectitude. When rectitude was lost, there were the rights. The rights are the wearing thin of loyalty and good faith and the beginning of disorder. Foreknowledge is the flowery embellishment of the way and the beginning of folly. Hence the man of large mind abides in the thick, not in the thin, in the fruit, not in the flower. Therefore he discards the one and takes the other. Chapter 39 Of old these came to be in possession of the one. Heaven in virtue of the one is limpid. Earth in virtue of the one is settled. Gods in virtue of the one have their potencies. The valley in virtue of the one is full. The myriad creatures in virtue of the one are alive. Lords and princes in virtue of the one become leaders in the empire. It is the one that makes these what they are. Without what makes it limpid, heaven might split. Without what makes it settled, earth might sink. Without what gives them their potencies, gods might spin themselves. Without what makes it full, the valley might run dry. Without what keeps them alive, the myriad creatures might perish. Without what makes them leaders, lords and princes might fall. Hence the superior must have the inferior as root. The high must have the low as base. Thus lords and princes refer to themselves as solitary, desolate, and hapless. This is taking the inferior as root, is it not? Hence the highest renown is without renown. Not wishing to be one among many like jade, nor to be aloof like stone. Chapter 40. Turning back is how the way moves. Weakness is the means the way employs. The myriad creatures in the world are born from something, and something from nothing. Chapter 41. When the best student hears about the way, he practices it assiduously. When the average student hears about the way, it seems to him, one moment there and gone the next. When the worst student hears about the way, he laughs out loud. If he did not laugh, it would be unworthy of being the way. Hence the Qian Yin has it, the way that is bright seems dull, the way that leads forward seems to lead backward, the way that is even seems rough. The highest virtue is like the valley. The sheerest whiteness seems sullied. Ample virtue seems defective. Vigorous virtue seems indolent. Plain virtue seems soiled. The great square has no corners. The great vessel takes long to complete. The great note is rarefied in sound. The great image has no shape. The way conceals itself in being nameless. 
It is the way alone that excels in bestowing and in accomplishing. Chapter 42. The way begets one, one begets two, two begets three, three begets the myriad creatures. The myriad creatures carry on their backs the yin and embrace in their arms the yang and are the blending of the generative forces of the two. There are no words which men detest more than solitary, desolate, and hapless. Yet lords and princes use these to refer to themselves. Thus a thing is sometimes added to by being diminished, and diminished by being added to. What others teach I also teach. Quote, the violent will not come to a natural end, end quote. I shall take this as my precept. Chapter 43. The most submissive thing in the world can ride roughshod over the hardest in the world, that which is without substance entering that which has no crevices. That is why I know the benefit of resorting to no action. The teaching that uses no words, the benefit of resorting to no action, these are beyond the understanding of all, but a very few in the world. Chapter 44 Your name or your person, which is dearer? Your person or your goods, which is worth more? Gain or loss, which is a greater bane? That is why excessive meanness is sure to lead to great expense. Too much store is sure to end in immense loss. No contentment, and you will suffer no disgrace. Know when to stop, and you will meet with no danger. You can then endure. Chapter 45 Great perfection seems chipped, yet use will not wear it out. Great fullness seems empty, yet use will not drain it. Great straightness seems bent. Great skill seems awkward. Great eloquence seems tongue-tied. Restlessness overcomes cold. Stillness overcomes heat. Limpid and still, one can be a leader in the empire. Chapter 46 when the way prevails in the empire, fleet-footed horses are relegated to plowing the fields. When the way does not prevail in the empire, war horses breed on the border. There is no crime greater than having too many desires. There is no disaster greater than not being content. There is no misfortune greater than being covetous. Hence, in being content, one will always have enough. Chapter 47 Without stirring abroad, one can know the whole world. Without looking out of the window, one can see the way of heaven. The further one goes, the less one knows. Therefore the sage knows without having to stir, identifies without having to see, accomplishes without having to act. Chapter 48 In the pursuit of learning, one knows more every day. In the pursuit of the way, one does less every day. One does less and less until one does nothing at all. And when one does nothing at all, there is nothing that is undone. It is always through not meddling that the empire is won. Should you meddle, then you are not equal to the task of winning the empire. Chapter 49 The sage has no mind of his own. He takes as his own the mind of the people. Those who are good I treat as good. Those who are not good I also treat as good. 
In so doing, I gain in goodness. Those who are of good faith, I have faith in. Those who are lacking in good faith, I also have faith in. In so doing, I gain in good faith. The sage, in his attempt to distract the mind of the empire, seeks urgently to muddle it. The people all have something to occupy their eyes and ears, and the sage treats them all like children. Chapter 50 When going one way means life, and going the other means death, three in ten will be comrades of life, three in ten will be comrades of death, and there are those who value life, and as a result, move into the realm of death. And these also number three in ten. Why is this so? Because they set too much store by life. I have heard it said that one who excels in safeguarding his own life does not meet with rhinoceros or tiger when traveling on land, nor is he touched by weapons when charging into an army. There is nowhere for the rhinoceros to pitch its horn. There is nowhere for the tiger to place its claws. There is nowhere for the weapon to lodge its blade. Why is this so? Because for him there is no realm of death. Chapter 51 The way gives them life. Virtue rears them. Things give them shape. Circumstances bring them to maturity. Therefore, the myriad creatures all revere the way and honor virtue. Yet the way is revered and virtue honored, not because this is decreed by any authority, but because it is natural for them to be treated so. Thus the way gives them life and rears them brings them up and nurses them, brings them to fruition and maturity, feeds and shelters them. It gives them life yet claims no possession. It benefits them yet exacts no gratitude. It is the steward yet exercises no authority. Such is called the mysterious virtue. Chapter 52 the world had a beginning, and this beginning could be the mother of the world. When you know the mother, go on to know the child. After you have known the child, go back to holding fast to the mother, and to the end of your days you will not meet with danger. Block the openings, shut the doors, and all your life you will not run dry. Unblock the openings, add to your troubles, and to the end of your days you will be beyond salvation. To see the small is called discernment. To hold fast to the submissive is called strength. Use the light, but give up the discernment. Bring not misfortune upon yourself. This is known as following the constant. Chapter 53 were I possessed of the least knowledge, I would, when walking on the great way, fear only paths that lead astray. The great way is easy, yet people prefer bypaths. The court is corrupt, the fields are overgrown with weeds, the granaries are empty, yet there are those dressed in fineries, with swords at their sides, filled with food and drink, and possessed of too much wealth. This is known as taking the lead in robbery. Far indeed is this from the way. Chapter 54 What is firmly rooted cannot be pulled out. What is tightly held in the arms will not slip loose. Through this, the offering of sacrifice by descendants will never come to an end. Cultivate it in your person and its virtue will be genuine. Cultivate it in the family and its virtue will be more than sufficient. Cultivate it in the hamlet and its virtue will endure. 
Cultivate it in the state, and its virtue will abound. Cultivate it in the empire, and its virtue will be pervasive. Hence, look at the person through the person. Look at the family through the family. Look at the hamlet through the hamlet. Look at the state through the state. Look at the empire through the empire. How do I know that the empire is like that? By means of this. Chapter 55. One who possesses virtue in abundance is comparable to a newborn babe. Poisonous insects will not sting it. Ferocious animals will not pounce on it. Predatory birds will not swoop down on it. Its bones are weak and its sinews supple, yet its hold is firm. It does not know of the union of male and female, yet its male member will stir. This is because its virility is at its height. It howls all day, yet does not become hoarse. This is because its harmony is at its height. To know harmony is called the constant. To know the constant is called discernment. To try to add to one's vitality is called ill omen. For the mind to egg on the breath is called violent. A creature in its prime doing harm to the old is known as going against the way. That which goes against the way will come to an early end. Chapter 56 One who knows does not speak. One who speaks does not know. Block the openings, shut the doors, blunt the sharpness, untangle the knots, soften the glare. Let your wheels move only along old ruts. This is known as mysterious sameness. Hence you cannot get close to it, nor can you keep it at arm's length. You cannot bestow benefit on it, nor can you do it harm. You cannot ennoble it, nor can you debase it. Therefore, it is valued by the empire. Chapter 57. Govern this state by being straightforward. Wage war by being crafty. But win the empire by not being meddlesome. How do I know that it is like that? By means of this. The more taboos there are in the empire, the poorer the people the more sharpened tools the people have, the more benighted the state. The more skills the people have, the further novelties multiply. The better known the laws and edicts, the more thieves and robbers there are. Hence the sage says, I take no action and the people are transformed of themselves. I prefer stillness and the people are rectified of themselves. I am not meddlesome, and the people prosper of themselves. I am free from desire, and the people of themselves become simple like the uncarved block. Chapter 58 When the government is muddled, the people are simple. When the government is alert, the people are cunning. It is on disaster that good fortune perches. It is beneath good fortune that disaster crouches. Who knows the limit? Does not the straightforward exist? The straightforward changes again into the crafty, and the good changes again into the monstrous. Indeed, it is long since the people were perplexed. Therefore the sage is square-edged, but does not scrape has corners but does not jab, extends himself but not at the expense of others, shines but does not dazzle. Chapter 59 In ruling the people and in serving heaven, it is best for a ruler to be sparing. It is because he is sparing that he may be said to follow the way from the start. Following the way from the start, he may be said to accumulate an abundance of virtue. Accumulating an abundance of virtue, there is nothing he cannot overcome. 
When there is nothing he cannot overcome, no one knows his limit. When no one knows his limit, he can possess a state. When he possesses the mother of a state, he can then endure. This is called the way of deep roots and firm stems by which one lives to see many days. Chapter 60 Governing a large state is like boiling a small fish. When the empire is ruled in accordance with the way, the spirits lose their potencies. Or rather, it is not that they lose their potencies, but that though they have their potencies, they do not harm the people. It is not only they who, having their potencies, do not harm the people, the sage also does not harm the people. As neither does any harm, each attributes the merit to the other. Chapter 61 A large state is the lower reaches of a river, the place where all the streams of the world unite. In the union of the world, the female always gets the better of the male by stillness. Being still, she takes the lower position. Hence, the large state, by taking the lower position, annexes the small state. The small state, by taking the lower position, affiliates itself to the large state. Thus, the one, by taking the lower position, annexes. The other, by taking the lower position, is annexed. All that the large state wants is to take the other under its wing. All that the small state wants is to have its services accepted by the other. If each of the two wants to find its proper place, it is meet that the large should take the lower position. Chapter 62 The way is the refuge for the myriad creatures. It is that by which the good man protects, and that by which the bad is protected. Beautiful words, when offered, will win high rank in return. Beautiful deeds can raise a man above others. Even if a man is not good, why should he be abandoned? Hence, when the emperor is set up, and the three ducal ministers are appointed, he who makes a present of the way, without stirring from his seat, is preferable to one who offers presents of jade discs followed by a team of four horses. Why was this way valued of old? Was it not said that by means of it one got what one wanted and escaped the consequences when one transgressed? Therefore it is valued by the empire. Chapter 63 do that which consists in taking no action. Pursue that which is not meddlesome. Savor that which has no flavor. Make the small big and the few many. Do good to him who has done you an injury. Lay plans for the accomplishment of the difficult before it becomes difficult. Make something big by starting with it when small. Difficult things in the world must needs have their beginnings in the easy. Big things must needs have their beginnings in the small. Therefore, it is because the sage never attempts to be great that he succeeds in becoming great. One who makes promises rashly rarely keeps good faith. One who is in the habit of considering things easy meets with frequent difficulties. Therefore, even the sage treats some things as difficult. That is why, in the end, no difficulties can get the better of him. Chapter 64 It is easy to maintain a situation while it is still secure. It is easy to deal with a situation before symptoms develop. It is easy to break a thing when it is yet brittle. It is easy to dissolve a thing when it is yet minute. Deal with a thing while it is still nothing. Keep a thing in order before disorder sets in. 
The tree that can fill the span of a man's arms grows from a downy tip. A terrace nine stories high rises from handfuls of earth. A journey of a thousand miles starts from beneath one's feet. Whoever does anything to it will ruin it. Whoever lays hold of it will lose it. Therefore the sage, because he does nothing, never ruins anything, and because he does not lay hold of anything, loses nothing. In their enterprises, the people always ruin them when on the verge of success. Be as careful at the end as at the beginning, and there will be no ruined enterprises. Therefore the sage desires not to desire, and does not value goods which are hard to come by. Learns to be without learning, and makes good the mistakes of the multitude, in order to help the myriad creatures to be natural, and to refrain from daring to act. Chapter 65 Of old those who excelled in the pursuit of the way, do not use it to enlighten the people, but to hoodwink them. The reason why the people are difficult to govern is that they are too clever, Hence, to rule a state by cleverness will be to the detriment of the state. Not to rule a state by cleverness will be a boon to the state. These two are models. Always to know the models is known as mysterious virtue. Mysterious virtue is profound and far-reaching. But when things turn back, it turns back with them. Only then is complete conformity realized. Chapter 66 The reason why the river and the sea are able to be king of the hundred valleys is that they excel in taking the lower position. Hence they are able to be king of the hundred valleys. Therefore, desiring to rule over the people, one must in one's words humble oneself before them and desiring to lead the people, one must in one's person follow behind them. Therefore the sage takes his place over the people, yet is no burden, takes his place ahead of the people, yet causes no obstruction. That is why the empire supports him joyfully, and never tires of doing so. It is because he does not contend that no one in the empire is in a position to contend with him. Chapter 68 The whole world says that my way is vast and resembles nothing. It is because it is vast that it resembles nothing. If it resembled anything, it would long before now have become small. I have three treasures which I hold and cherish. The first is known as compassion, the second is known as frugality, the third is known as not daring to take the lead in the empire. Being compassionate, one could afford to be courageous. Being frugal, one could afford to extend one's territory. Not daring to take the lead in the empire, one could afford to be lord over the vessels. Now, to forsake compassion for courage, to forsake frugality for expansion, to forsake the rear for the lead is sure to end in death. Through compassion, one will triumph in attack and be impregnable in defense. What heaven succors, it protects with the gift of compassion. Chapter 68 one who excels as a warrior does not appear formidable. One who excels in fighting is never roused in anger. One who excels in defeating his enemy does not join issue. One who excels in employing others humbles himself before them. This is known as the virtue of non-contention. This is known as making use of the efforts of others. This is known as matching the sublimity of heaven. Chapter 69. 
The strategists have a saying, I dare not play the host, but play the guest. I dare not advance an inch, but retreat a foot instead. This is known as marching forward when there is no road. Rolling up one's sleeves when there is no harm. Dragging one's adversary by force when there is no adversary. And taking up arms when there are no arms. There is no disaster greater than taking on an enemy too easily. So doing nearly cost me my treasure. Thus, of two sides, raising arms against each other, it is the one that is sorrow-stricken that wins. Chapter 70 My words are very easy to understand and very easy to put into practice, yet no one in the world can understand them or put them into practice. Words have an ancestor, and affairs have a sovereign. It is because people are ignorant that they fail to understand me. Those who understand me are few. Those who imitate me are honored. Therefore the sage, while clad in homespun, conceals on his person a priceless piece of jade. Chapter 71 To know yet to think that one does not know is best. Not to know yet to think that one knows will lead to difficulty. It is by being alive to difficulty that one can avoid it. The sage meets with no difficulty. It is because he is alive to it that he meets with no difficulty. Chapter 72 When the people lack a proper sense of awe, then some awful visitation will descend upon them. Do not constrict their living space. Do not press down on their means of livelihood. It is because you do not press down on them that they will not weary of the burden. Hence the sage knows himself, but does not display himself, loves himself, but does not exalt himself. Therefore he discards the one and takes the other. Chapter 73 He who is fearless in being bold will meet with his death. He who is fearless in being timid will stay alive. Of the two, one leads to good, the other to harm. Heaven hates what it hates. Who knows the reason why? Therefore, even the sage treats some things as difficult. The way of heaven excels in overcoming, though it does not contend, in responding, though it does not speak, in attracting, though it does not summon, in laying plans, though it appears slack. The net of heaven is cast wide, though the mesh is not fine, yet nothing ever slips through. Chapter 74 When the people are not afraid of death, Wherefore, frighten them with death. Were the people always afraid of death, and were I able to arrest and put to death those who innovate, then who would dare? There is a regular executioner whose charge it is to kill. To kill on behalf of the executioner is what is described as chopping wood on behalf of the master carpenter. In chopping wood on behalf of the master carpenter, there are few who escape hurting their own hands instead. Chapter 75 The people are hungry. It is because those in authority eat up too much in taxes that the people are hungry. The people are difficult to govern. It is because those in authority are too fond of action that the people are difficult to govern. The people treat death lightly. It is because the people set too much store by life that they treat death lightly. It is just because one has no use for life that one is wiser than the man who values life. Chapter 76 
A man is supple and weak when living, but hard and stiff when dead. Grass and trees are pliant and fragile when living, but dried and shriveled when dead. Thus the hard and the strong are the comrades of death. The supple and the weak are the comrades of life. Therefore a weapon that is strong will not vanquish. A tree that is strong will suffer the axe. The strong and big takes the lower position. The supple and weak takes the higher position. Chapter 77 Is not the way of heaven like the stretching of a bow? The high it presses down, the low it lifts up. The excessive it takes from, the deficient it gives to. It is the way of heaven to take from what has in excess in order to make good what is deficient. The way of man is otherwise. It takes from those who are in want in order to offer this to those who already have more than enough. Who is there that can take what he himself has in excess and offer this to the empire? Only he who has the way. Therefore the sage benefits them, yet exacts no gratitude, accomplishes his task, yet lays claim to no merit. Is this not because he does not wish to be considered a better man than others? Chapter 78 In the world there is nothing more submissive and weak than water, yet for attacking that which is hard and strong nothing can surpass it. This is because there is nothing that can take its place. That the weak overcomes the strong, and the submissive overcomes the hard, everyone in the world knows, yet no one can put this knowledge into practice. Therefore the sage says, one who takes on himself the humiliation of the state is called a ruler, worthy of offering sacrifices to the gods of earth and millet. One who takes on himself the calamity of the state is called a king worthy of dominion over the entire empire. Straightforward words seem paradoxical. Chapter 79 When peace is made between great enemies, some enmity is bound to remain undispelled. How can this be considered perfect? Therefore the sage takes the left hand to tally, but exacts no payment from the people. The man of virtue takes charge of the tally. The man of no virtue takes charge of exaction. It is the way of heaven to show no favoritism. It is forever on the side of the good man. Chapter 80. Reduce the size and population of this state. Ensure that even though the people have tools of war for a troop or a battalion, they will not use them, and also that they will be reluctant to move to distant places because they look on death as no light matter. Even when they have ships and carts, they will have no use for them, and even when they have armor and weapons, they will have no occasion to make a show of them. Bring it about that the people will return to the use of the knotted rope, will find relish in their food and beauty in their clothes, will be content in their abode and happy in the way they live. Though adjoining states are within sight of one another and the sound of dogs barking and cocks crowing in one state can be heard in another, Yet the people of one state will grow old and die without having had any dealings with those of another. Chapter 81 Truthful words are not beautiful. Beautiful words are not truthful. Good words are not persuasive. Persuasive words are not good. He who knows has no wide learning. He who has wide learning does not know. The sage does not hoard. 
having bestowed all he has on others, he has yet more. Having given all he has to others, he is richer still. The way of heaven benefits and does not harm. The way of the sage is bountiful and does not contend.